Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk about the top uh, SCP-6000 contest entries. Uh, I'm going to go over each of them in a little bit of a summation and give you kind of my own personal evaluation of the ones I've read so far. I haven't read them all. There's about a hundred of them. Probably won't read more than ten at most, depending on if they come up later. But for this, I've read about f six. I want to say six of them. Uh, today's video is also sponsored by the SCP Foundation Wall Art by Vermilion Creative Kickstarter, but I'll talk more about it at the end of the video. But there will be a link at the top, near the top of the description, that will send you to their Kickstarter page and you can pledge, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. F for now, let's go over <laughs> the SCPs uh, in the cur So what I've done so far is I don't... I probably will read some of the future ones a little bit down the line, but my plan right now is to read anything that's higher rated than the 6,000 contest hub. That feels like a good cutoff point. Uh, if you can't get a higher rating than a hub with no content, I feel like you've probably, no, I should say no creative content, then I feel like you've done something wrong. Now out of the current seven, yes, yeah, seven SCPs that uh, meet that requirement, I've read all of them except for one, and that's because it is 30,000 words long, um, if, which ironically is probably the one you would need the most, the one you would most need a summary of, but we'll get to that at some point in the future. Um, I'm planning on reading it. I guess it's inevitable that I have to, but uh, I'm not there yet. And I know it's multiple choice endings, which is why it's so long, but I wouldn't feel comfortable reviewing it without seeing all of the content so anyway we'll start with the one that is maybe gonna win it's complicated looks like this one is solely written by rounder house yeah looks like it okay so let's grab the licensing information scp <laughs> it's not scp 6000 this is the problem licensing information is technically correct for the moment but it's not we're just going to call it The Serpent, The Moose, and The Wanderer's Library by Rounder House from the SCP Wiki is licensed under a Creative Commons share-alike uh, attribution license. So, what is this about? Well, as the name might suggest, this is a Serpent's Hand-focused SCP, specifically The Wanderer's Library. Um, it strongly involves um, an author avatar of... Uh, there's a character, there's a person, there's an author, let's do it that way. There's an author on the SCP, most notably, probably the author of SCP-1000, um, named the Deadly Moose, and their author avatar is an odd name, Tilda Swinton Moose, um, but that character shows up quite a lot in this article, and what is happening is that the Wanderer's Library in exists and is spreading from some sort of portal in the Amazon rainforest. It is a very interview heavy SCP. Most of the important stuff happens in conversations between Moose and one of the entities that was recovered from the anomaly. But in the end, the Wanderer's Library basically is taking over the entire world. That's that one. Uh, and it's likely going to be the one to win, though the next one is making a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for here, uh, a reach for number one. Uh, it's DJ Cactuses, and we're going to go down and see if this has licensing information at the end. It doesn't, but regardless, let's double check and make sure that it isn't co-authored, and it doesn't look like it is. This article is called The Demon Hector and the Dread Titania. And it is about, it's a, a lot of things. Ironically enough, it is set in the Amazon. <laughs> and, it, Creek, it is set in the Amazon and it is uh, also involves uh, SCP-1000 and by extension, uh, Tilda Swinton Moose, the author avatar of the Deadly Moose. <laughs> so the top two articles in this contest, both... Uh, are set in the Amazon and heavily involve uh, the author avatar of Moose, um, which is an odd coincidence. This one may run ahead, but I understand Cactus has decided... Oh, I don't know this for sure. I shouldn't say this out loud if I don't know for sure. 
But I have heard some rumors that Cactus is planning on giving the 6,000 slot to Rounder House, even if he manages to beat him in the contest, uh, which is, you know, because he's won, uh, what did he, won 3,000, and he's, <coughs> and he does pretty well in the other contests as well, because he's Cactus. All these are really long, by the way, not just to <laughs> mention that's not true. One of them isn't. Uh, but most of these SCPs are also very long, and this one's no exception. Um, it is about... Oh, man. This is hard to summarize. So, the fairies from Taboo have, a long, long time ago, created SCP-1000, the Bigfoot monsters, in an effort to fight back against humanity and ended up creating something that was weirder and more terrifying than humanity was it's a little little white walkerish actually now that i think about it it's very similar in that kind of way children of the forest and the white walkers have this have a similar origin to this um but what, and same reasons even, that they wanted to fight back against humanity, so they created these monsters, and these monsters then became their own sort of plague and problem. But what happens is, uh, SCP-1000 is, ex still exists in sort of ways, they took on a Davide Empire, there's a whole bunch of stuff happening in this SCP, uh, <laughs> The important parts, though, is that it involves SCP-1000, SCP-4000, and uh, Moose. <laughs> you have to read it to understand. It's a lot of exploration, and it also, uh, you know, there's this underground cave underneath the Amazon rainforest that basically is there's corpses of, like, oh, I don't know, what's it, hundreds of thousands of people? Or entities, I should say, hundred thousands of entities, uh, some of them fairies, some of them humans, some of them the monsters, I believe, that are Bigfoot. Um, the reason why this seems a little bit rambly is that the article itself isn't rambly. I'm not saying that. The reason why this is rambly is the article is just complicated as heck. Um, and uh, I, I recommend it as well, as well as I recommend the other one as well. I'd be surprised if Cactus actually overtakes Rounder House, but he might. I mean, he's still gaining a little bit. Um, the third in the list is Nearer My God to Thee. And we're going to look at this real quick. Make sure we get the crediting in properly. By the way, uh, hold on. <laughs> the Demon Hector and the Dread Titana was written by DJ Cactus and is under a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license. We're going to say these out loud. We're also going to have links in the description to all of these. Uh, Nearer My God to Thee was written... Oh, it actually has this licensing citation. That makes it a little easier. was written by Elegy Fish Truck. Um, it is licensed under a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license. And yeah, it's just Elegy Fish Truck again. I think one of these is co-authored by like a little bunch of people. And this one's pretty simple. Um, there is a num there are a number of end of the world broadcasts in reserve at a lot of major networks. Uh, on the off chance that something were to happen, then the world were to be ending, they're supposed to play these things. And I believe one of the more famous one is the Turner Broadcasting's uh, version, where they basically have an orchestral version of "Nearer My God to Thee." Um, in this version, in the SCP universe, and this is actually quite short. Um, the SCP Foundation has laced this, uh, these, these, uh, broadcasts with something that will make people calm down and just accept the end. That's it. That's the whole, that's the whole article. <laughs> it's the shortest of all of these entries. Um, then we have the true empire and we're going to scroll down again. There is a licensing citation, which is good. Okay. By Ace Millard. I could be, I've never had to say that out loud before, but I'm hoping I got it right. Ace Mallard or Ace Millard and Storm Breath, a licensed, it's called the True Empire and licensed under a Creative Commons share-alike attribution license. And this one is a kind of a two-parter. 
see, um, let's grab the article's description. All ah, right, SCP-140 is the old Davite book where if it gets completed, the Davite Empire comes back and in any fluids that are allowed near it will cause it to write more and become and the Davite Empire comes closer and closer to modern day. Someone steals the book and finishes it. And uh, the SCP Foundation has just a few months to figure out what to do about it. And eventually they decide they're just going to have a broken masquerade because the Davite Empire, as described, is this you know, terrible blood worship, or I should say Scarlet King worshiping blood magic uh, empire that stretches back into antiquity. And if it exists in modern day, things are going to get real bad real quick. Um, but then it happens and it turns out that none of that is true and that the Davide Empire of today is fairly mundane. There's still some stuff like they were still not a great empire. Uh, they owned more slaves than any other uh, empire on Earth has ever owned. But, this is important, uh, a slave uprising took them out at some point. And the book was just written by some dude who thought, it made up a whole bunch of stuff and thought it would be cool if the Davide Empire was this, like, eldritch abomination of an empire that could come back at any time and be just, and be just was terrible. Uh, but what he ended up doing by creating it was he wiped the Davites who still existed off the map. Uh, and so what comes back is Davistan, which is essentially just a no different than the basic, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, Central Asian states, maybe a little bit more advanced, but not by much. And a former Soviet Republic as well. So it was under the Soviets for the longest time. And that's it. That's the article. Uh, the next one is All Creatures Great and Small by Big Sloth on My Face. Licensed under a Creative Commons share like attribution. This one is, I'm not sure if I'd say it's my favorite. It was my favorite until I read the next one, uh, which I actually enjoyed more. I also have problems with all of these. None of them are as I particularly impressed with, but they're all right. And some of them, if you really enjoy the content, like if you're super into the Davites or you're super into the Serpent's Hand or um, if like the lore of 4000 and the fairies, which I wasn't a particular fan of in the first place, or Bigfoot, which I'm not a particular fan of in the first place, interest you, then those could interest you as well. Um, but this one in particular is sort of more original, doesn't rely on much of anything that I can think of. And it's essentially a tree of life. But in that tree of life is uh, housed the de the genetic material for all living things. Uh, and if you modify the stuff on the tree, you also modify stuff in real life. So, uh, and I actually quite like it. I think it's worth reading. I don't, I'm not going to spoil it more th uh, for you more than that. Um, but yeah. And then finally, uh, the one I read just this morning, which I think may be my favorite. There is one problem I have with it. I'll say this. Uh, uh, it, it's, it, it definitely reads more as a tale than an SCP. Uh, and that is, I guess, probably my worst. Yeah, that's probably my worst problem with it. But other than that. I think it's I think it's probably my favorite article uh, in the SCP 6000 contest. It's also on the list of articles I've given you so far, the lowest rated. So this is by T. Rutherford. Nope, nope. I don't want to click through to that. It is uh, licensed under a Creative Commons share like attribution license. Again, links to all of these will be in the description below. And Amalon is about an alternate universe, which I love the alternate universe SCPs. That's it's right in my wheelhouse. Um, it's about an alternate universe, basically where the SCP Foundation of their world united with all the other um, anomalous groups and brought about world peace and world order um, and magic and everything is like omnipresent but in sort of a way that you would think of as technological at the same time. And uh, yeah, there's just a long discussion. I, I mean, it's a it's a good story. And that's important to remember. It is a very good story. It's just not 
a, I don't think it's a good SCP. Uh, but I liked it more than all of the other ones. So if I had to recommend one, I'd probably recommend that. It's also the lowest rated among all. It's only just made. It was yesterday when I looked. It wasn't even above the contest hub. It's only just now raised above the contest hub in rating. There are more below the contest hub in rating that I'm probably going to go over. I might actually uh, make a new cutoff as uh, anything plus 100 or, uh, or lower. I'll probably do one more video maybe two depending on how much time it's going to take me to sum up inevitable but regardless uh that's it for today uh we're going to talk a little bit about this foundation scp foundation wall art actually i'm going to put this stuff up on the screen right now so i mean this uh this piece of wall art is going to have so many characters from the scp foundation in it it's got dr sumerian Ah, it's got Dr. Samarian in it. It's not listed on the on the thing here, but it is it is I, I've seen the art, so it, it is in there. Uh but there's Dr. Clef, Dr. Kondraki, Gears, Bright, Glass, Samarian, Iceberg, Kane, uh, Talaran, Wondertainment, Max Lombardi, Diogenes, uh, Emma I and Photosynthetic Elliot. Chelsea Photosynthetic Elliot, I guess is the name. And then just tons of SCPs in here. Most of these SCPs are Series 1, so if that's your thing, you might like this a little bit more. But I think, regardless of if SCP, regardless of if Series 1 is your thing or not, I, this is a beautiful piece of art, I think. And uh, yeah, you, you can see it on the screen right now. I highly suggest you go over. The link will be in the description below. And... It helps me out a little bit to help them out. So and I really believe in the in the, in the work. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who both pledged at $100. And for God's sakes, hit the subscribe button. My God. My last month was only a plus 127 subscribers. I have had not even particularly impressive days last year. Not this year, but last year. Over 127 subscribers. At this rate, it's going to take me, thir what, 30 more years to get... Not 30 more years. 30 more months to get to 100,000? I want that silver play button, bitches. Anyway. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. And thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. I will see you all again on Thursday.